uh, Glenn, it's it's hard to pin you down in terms of where you fit on the uh, political spectrum. Uh, but it feels like, you know, there's this desire among people who engage in politics to say, OK, where does that guy fall? Is he wearing my colors or not? Uh, what is that about? Is it, is it just about, you know, the pure pursuit of political power to try and pin where people are on the spectrum? I think in one way it's kind of become, and first of all, thank you for those very nice remarks. I'm really happy to be here, especially since you're in the important work of saving the nation. Um, so I want to contribute whatever <laughs> well, I we're can trying. To, to your endeavor. Um, yeah, you know, I think part of it is just a shorthand to try and understand uh, how people think in order not to have to grapple with the arguments they're advancing. So if you can put somebody into an ideological box or pin a partisan label to their forehead, you can either affirm what it is they're saying or dismiss what they're saying based on that alone without having to engage the substance of, of the discussion. And that's in part one of the reasons why I wouldn't say I go out of my way deliberately to evade those kind of labels, but I've never sought nor rejected any of them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the only one I've uh, claimed is a civil libertarian, given that it just kind of grows out of my political ethos since childhood. It's really the one consistent guiding principle or political sensibility that I have. And, and obviously having been a lawyer before becoming a journalist, that was a major focus of, of my legal work. So that is a label with which I'm comfortable, though it doesn't help people very much, especially these days where there's a real question about is civil libertarianism found more on the left or the right? Is both is either a party a real ally to civil libertarianism? Um, but I basically, I mostly think that it's just a, a means to prevent people from having to confront a lot of the complexities and nuances that actually drive our discourse by trying to convert it all to a simple binary that's much more easy to comprehend. Right and then use these kind of tools of dismissal in order to apply them to. Glenn, Glenn, let me, let me end with this then, because I've been wondering, you are still an American citizen, although you're living in uh, Brazil. Do you vote in American elections? And if you were to uh, coming up in 22 or 24, could you see yourself voting for Republicans? So I don't vote. I, I, I am a full American citizen. I'm not a citizen of Brazil. I pay taxes to the US government. Obviously, I could vote. 9 million American citizens live outside the United States. It's a pretty big number. Um, I don't vote only because I feel like it would interfere with my work, meaning my for me, the essence of my work always has to be independence from anyone who wields political power. And I feel like if I voted for somebody, it would mean that I've somehow become vested in their success and it would impede my ability to criticize them or to analyze them fairly. But there definitely are instances, and I haven't hidden this at all, where I feel like I have more in common politically with, say, J.D. Vance than I do with Chuck Schumer. And so, sure, there are definitely times when, at least for the issues that I prioritize most, there are times, not all the time or necessarily most of the time, but certainly there are times, non-trivial instances in which the person who's identified as being on the right or the Republican has more in common with my political values than the person who calls himself a Democrat. 